All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all, I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender, humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender, make me Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit, truly know that thou art mine. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy love and power, let thy blessings fall on me. I surrender all, I surrender all, I surrender all, I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Yeah, this, this is where I was sitting from. I surrender all. Your Isaac. Your Isaac. On the altar. My Isaac on the altar. You know, there was a grotesque individual who called himself Meat Loaf. Unfortunately, there are those of you who might know who I'm referring to, Meat Loaf. He, uh, he made a song uh, glorifying a one-night stand, fornication, and riding a motorcycle and going to hell. <laughs> Uh, but he also did a song, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Please, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version. Please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 22. Please, okay, listen, get the scriptures. Don't get a Bible. Don't get a Bible like the NIV, the ESV, or anything like that. Get the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? Please, please follow me along. Please follow me along word for word, verse by verse. Check me out. Follow me along. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. Please search the scriptures with me. Okay? And hey, if you come to something and I'm, uh, I'm speaking a little too fast or or like I, we read uh, this verse onto this verse and you're like, well, wait a second, and you pause it, read, read the context. See, that's studying. Okay? Please. Please follow me along. Okay? This is not your entertainment. Okay. Today we are going to be talking about, yet again, 
things that interfere, that get in the way of the love of God that we as the church of the living God ought to have unto our creator who loved us and gave himself for us, okay? And this video is not necessarily for you lost people, but you need to consider. You need to consider. And we're going to be basing this off of the love of children. Because if you have seen, now especially here in America, if you have seen some of these sporting events that these kids with their parents are involved in, <laughs> wow. Some of these fathers are like treating these kids as if they're trying out for the major leagues or something. Excuse me, some crazy nonsense like that. Or these mothers with their daughters and stuff like that. And what do they say? What do they say? I want for my son or my daughter all the things that I didn't have. And you might be thinking, it's like, well, that, that's good. Well, is it? Projecting onto the innocent child who probably wants nothing. And most of these uh, kids, when you hear some of their testimonies about their fathers or their mothers pushing on them, their desires for them. Yeah. Yeah. They turned out a little damaged usually. Usually. But yes, I want for my son all the things that I never had. So that you can live vicariously through your son? Mm, that's a little I, 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 me, 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 isn't it? And see, Christianity, the Christians today, in their church buildings, they preach Satan, a God who has no demands. But see, the God of the authorized version of the scriptures, the true Lord Jesus Christ, oh, he does have demands. He's a jealous God. He made you, and he doesn't want to share you with the world. We're well, getting a little ahead of ourselves. Like I said, we are going to be using child worship, basically, as the premise. But it's also going to apply for other things, and that's up for you to discern between your own life and what we're looking at. What is... What is above God to you? What is above God to you? You might say nothing, nothing. Well, I, I find that hard to believe and I'm going to call you a liar. Why? Because not even the great Apostle Paul, the greatest of the church of the living God, couldn't do that perfectly. Oh, he loved God with all his heart and with all his mind and with all his soul and with all his strength. But 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? No. See, that's, that's what Romans chapter 7 is about, okay? Okay? But, getting a little ahead of ourselves. Genesis chapter 22. We're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 3. Okay? Follow me along. And it came to pass, after these things, that God did tempt Abraham. In a video, Why Did God Tempt Abraham?, we discuss the, this very, oh, why did God tempt Abraham, okay? It has been covered. The link for that video will be in the description box. We got a lot of stuff we're going to be going over today. We don't have the time to get into that temptation, okay? Uh, of why, uh, how God tempted Abraham, okay? Um, we don't have time to get into it. There will be a link in the description box. Okay, where we go through the scriptures and explain because it says in the scriptures God doesn't tempt anyone, and what do atheists do? And these liars and these yea had well, God tempted Abraham. See, there's a God. No, it's not a contradiction. Okay, it's not. Okay, it's not a contradiction. All right, like I said, link will be in the description box talking about the temptation here about uh, God tempted Abraham. Okay, they'll be in the description box. Don't post a stupid comment without watching the video, okay? All right, but like I said, we got, we're going to continue. 
And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest. Oh, yeah. And get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. So the Lord demanded of Abraham his only son Isaac, whom he loved, would have done anything for. And you got to remember too, and the typology here of Christ is just overwhelming. Okay, But let's remember a few things here. This was the promised son. The promised son. Go to Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, verses 3 on to verse 6. And Abram, before he was Abraham, and Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. See, this is the difference between going from faith to faith. Faith here in the Old Testament and is what is, was what in God will do. While faith today is in what God has done. Okay? Right here is the proof of it. Abraham believed God and he accounted it to him for righteousness. He believed in what God was going to do. Okay? Today, going from faith to faith, as it says in Romans, okay, we believe in what the Lord has done. It is finished. Okay? But, okay? promised seed, a promised son. And of course, what happened? What happened? Yeah, what happened, huh? Yeah. God made a promise to Abram at that time. His name was Abram at the time. Uh, of a promised son. So, Abram and Sarai took it upon themselves. Took it upon themselves to fulfill God's promises. Hmm? How, how many of you high have done that? God has said he would do something uh, in prayer or reading the scriptures. You know that God will take care of you, but you take it upon yourself to fulfill what God said he would do himself. And what happened? Hmm? What happened? God made a promise to Abram, yes, about a promised son. So, Sarai and Abram, they took it upon themselves. And what did they do? They went to Hagar. Hagar. And oh boy, what happened with that? Ishmael. Okay? Ishmael. Which uh, the children of Israel are enjoying the fruits of Abram and Sarai, taking it upon themselves to fulfill the promises that God said he himself would keep that he would do. They took it upon themselves. How many of you have failed at that? Hmm? It's like, oh, oh, well, Lord, you said you would provide and take care of me, but ah, you're taking so long, so I'm going to do it myself. How'd that work out for you? Well, it worked out great. Yeah, but who got the glory? On oh, God. And that kind of work it's going to turn into dust in your hands sooner or later, buddy. Yeah. But we're talking about the promised son. Okay? And now Genesis chapter 17, verses 19 on to verse 21. Now this is when they became Abraham and Sarah. Okay? Genesis chapter 17, verses 19 on to verse 21. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. 
And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. And yes, the Lord did make of Ishmael a great nation. They are the Muslims of today, okay? The, the, the direct descendants of Ishmael, okay? Yes, yes. Um, and you got to remember, Ishmael was the legitimate firstborn of Abraham, of Abram. But yes, he was the firstborn. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. He was the firstborn. And today, in this dispensation, especially today, if a son of Ishmael comes to the Lord Jesus Christ on his terms, broken and contrite and in fear of him, call upon his name, and the Lord save him, he's of the church of the living God. Okay? All right? Yes, a son of Ishmael can be saved today. Anybody could be saved today. Okay? So yes, uh, we're not to, you know, hate Ishmael or anything. No, no. They are of the seed of Abraham. Yes, they are. Or of Abram, excuse me. Excuse me. Abraham, he is the firstborn of Abraham. Yes, he is. The name change has something to do with that. But yes, he is his firstborn son. Verse 21. But... My covenant will I establish with Isaac. Because Isaac is the son of promise. Ishmael, even though the firstborn, even though blessed, was not the promised son. Why? Because Abram and Sarai took it upon themselves to bring about God's promises, which he said he would do himself. That ought to be a big warning unto some of you. <laughs> okay? But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. I'm a son. And of course, let's go to Genesis chapter 21, verses 1 on to verse 5. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. So this was the promised son. And Abraham loved him. Oh, Sarah loved him. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Let's see. Just like the rich young ruler. Just like the rich young ruler. Goes to the Lord. It's like, you know, Lord, what good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? It's like, why well, callest thou me good? There is only one good but God. See, he, the rich young ruler didn't realize he was talking to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He didn't realize that. But he just saw about, he, he saw a miracle worker who could give him good stuff. Not, not the Father. What does the Lord say to him? It's like, you know the commandments. And the rich young ruler is like, well, I've done all this. What lack I What's the problem? What did the Lord say? One thing you lack. See, that's what the Lord does. He takes his finger and he puts it on that one thing. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. I love the Lord, but Lord, don't have me give this up. I love the Lord, but I can't give that. Oh boy, you better be careful with that. You better be really careful. God's a jealous God. God demands that he be first. And see, Christianity that preaches Satanism, okay? Come as you are. God has no standards. God doesn't care about these things, okay? Oh, seek him first just so your life will be better and get all your material blessings. No, no. The God of the scriptures, I, I am your blessing. I am. 
okay? Jesus Christ. He is our blessed hope. He is our life, okay? He is to be number one above all things. And some of you is like, well, he is, Brett. You lie. You lie and your breath stink, and I can hear it all the way over here. I know, excuse me, I can smell it all the way over here. <laughs> yeah. You're a liar. See, not even Paul, perfectly, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, could keep that. That's why he says, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Okay? But God needs to be first above all things, above everything. Hence, hence, God demanded of Abraham, give me your son. The son I promised you. Whom you love, whom thou lovest, in Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. Go to Matthew chapter 10. Go to Matthew chapter 10. Go to Matthew chapter 10. Verses 34 and verse 39. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against his against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And quoting Micah chapter 7, verse 6, And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. See, when someone truly comes to the Lord, broken and contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon him, and the Lord save him, and make him a new creature. He is of the church of the living God. Okay? Someone saves you, and your family is lost? Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, <laughs> but a sword. What happens? Every single one of you of the Church of the Living God, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In order to have peace with your lost family members, what has to happen, right? You have to deny this. You want peace with your lost family? Deny the scriptures. Hence, for I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. See, when someone is truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you're his. And amongst your family, okay, because you are bought with a price, there's going to be conflict. See, saved and lost cannot dwell that long amongst each other. Okay, that's why you really need to question things uh, yourself and other people when they can be around lost people uh, for un unbeknownst amounts of time. Okay, we are to prefer one another, not the lost world. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Okay, and what happens? Those of you who are saved of the church of the living God, you know, you're saved. And now you and your mother are at odds over what? Over our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, this book. Because this book says one thing, and your father or mother says another. Don't it? And in order to be peace, uh, be at peace with them, they expect you to put this away, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. And what does our Lord say to that? He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now, think of this. Your mother and father they are man. They are flesh. They are dirt, dust, just like you are. They're going to die. You're going to die. Your son, your daughter, they're going to die one day. 
why do we as man decide to love flesh more than God our Father when it happens quite often quite, quite often doesn't it doesn't it now this doesn't mean that you hate your children or you hate them like they're like oh I don't want no 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 that's not what this is talking about not at all but when you are taking whatever it is it is not just relegated onto uh, dirt like yourself. What is more important to you? What is taking precedence of the love of God in your life? What are you putting above God? Yourself? An animal? An um an unhealthy relationship? A vice? Hmm? What is it? Hmm? He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Find your life in the world. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. You're a good friends, buddy, buddy, with lost people, with the world. You're a friend of the world. You're an enemy of God. We are to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Remember? Okay? We've got to remember, our God is a jealous God. Our God expects, demands, that you put him above everything. Is that not obvious with what we just looked at in Genesis? Hmm? It's like, it's like um, in uh, John, John chapter 21. After the death, burial, and resurrection, within this dispensation, by the way, Peter, who denied the Lord three times. And what did the Lord do? Almost in a mocking uh, fashion unto Peter, Shimon, son of, uh, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Peter's like, yea, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lamb. Second time. Because because Peter denied the Lord three times, right? Second time. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Okay? Let's look at that. John, chapter 21. Instead of spouting it off by memory. <coughs> verses 15. John 21, verses 15. On to verse 19. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Shimon Peter, Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, almost in a mocking way, because of the three times that Peter denied the Lord. Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, Thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Now hold on. See, when the Lord, the Lord told Peter, Hey, you say you go with me and die for me, but before the Cock crow, you shall deny me three times. Peter wasn't a saved man at that time. Oh No, he wasn't. He wasn't converted. He wasn't. So he denied the Lord three times. What did Peter put before the Lord? I, 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 me, 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 me. Oh, yeah, boy. 
like these parents. I want for my kids that which I never had. You selfish, self-righteous, ugh. You don't care about that kid. You just want to live vicariously through them. You do everything for them so that it may look, look good for you. He saith unto him the third time, Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And you know, it says in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 21 or 22, I believe it is, after the third time, when Peter denied the Lord, and that atrociously, and he made it look like he was one of them because he swore and cursed. It's like, see, I'm not one of these guys. See, look at the language. I'm talking like you. The Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Oh. Fourteen years saved by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I still come upon that in the scriptures. That, that gets me misty eye, man. He had denied the Lord three times. He said he was going to do it. And then when he did it, the Lord turned and looked upon me, Peter. Oh. <laughs> Oy vey, huh? Wow. Wow. Have you ever been there? Hmm? Taking things upon you that the Lord said he was going to do. And then it, it, it falls to dung before your face. The Lord... Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Eat my sheep. Do what I tell you. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. You did what you wanted to do. Uh, like it says in Ecclesiastes, you know, uh, walk in the way of your heart and in the sight of your eyes but know thou for all these things God will bring thee into judgment okay this is not in the notes for those I sent these notes to a couple of the brethren uh, yeah uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11 okay yeah verses 9 and 10 rejoice O young man in thy youth and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. Go ahead, yeah. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Yeah. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Yeah, sorrow. Sorrow. The sorrow that comes from the world. That's all you're going to get from this world, the sorrow anyway. Verily, back in uh, John 21, verse 18, Verily I say unto you, Verily, verily I say unto thee, Excuse me. When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest where, whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hand, thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This he spake, this spake he, excuse me, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, follow me. Yeah, because remember, every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. Whether, you, whether it is because you are of the church and the living God, and you do it at the judgment seat of Christ, or you're lost and you do it at the great white throne. But you're going to give an account of yourself to God. God's a jealous God. God's a jealous God. And you got to be careful about what you put, about be, putting anything before God. Okay? Now go to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Peter put himself before the Lord. That's what that was. And that's usually what's the culprit. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? <laughs> Nine times out of ten, 
we put ourselves before the Lord. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 and verse 6. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. This is the second commandment that we just read, okay? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Why? For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. First commandment, thou shalt have no other gods, little g, before me. Okay? And what did Satan say to Eve? Thou shalt be as God, ye shall be as gods, excuse me. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And right away people, well, that's just limited because of the second commandment about a statue. It's not limited to that. Oh, you could, there are other things that many people make gods out of. Little idols, like their children. like their pets, like themselves, like their vehicles, like their wife, like their husband, you name it. God's a jealous God. He demands first place in your life. And what results onto any of us when that is not the case, huh? Huh? Because you got to remember. And see, a lot of people confuse jealousy with envy. Okay? Jealousy with envy. There's a difference between the two. Okay? Like, uh, you know, you can be envious of someone, but jealousy. Jealousy. Jealousy and envy are two different things. A lot of people mistake um, envy for jealousy and jealousy for envy. Okay? But God is a jealous God. God made you. Okay? It doesn't matter if you are, and I'm being polite, if you are going to be stupid <coughs> and be an idiot. An idiot is void of logic and reason. I'm being polite. If you're going to be a stupid idiot and believe in evolution, that's your own problem. Try to explain to the Lord at the great white throne of judgment, evolution. Okay, good luck with that. It doesn't matter if you if you believe in that or not. Okay, it doesn't matter what you believe. Jesus Christ is God the Father. He created you. You are going to give an account of yourself before him, either as the church of the living God, at the judgment seat of Christ, or at the great white throne. Which one is it going to be? Which one is it going to be? Okay? doesn't matter what you believe. You're going to give an account to him. Okay? He made you to have fellowship with you. Okay? He made you because he wanted to. To have fellowship with you. And he, as your creator, has every right to get angry at you for when you take what is ought to be rightfully his and give it on to Satan and onto things of the world, and onto other piles of dust, like us. Hmm? When you decide to worship and put the love that is owed to God on a man that will die, on a woman or whatever, okay? No, and that's not saying that we're not to love children or anything. No, not at all. But it's when you love your children above God, problem. That's the problem. When you love anything above God, that's the problem. You say, well, I love God more than all things, yeah? Yeah? You will do anything for the Lord, but you just won't do that one thing, right? You can't give or won't give up that one thing, whatever it is. Whatever it is, and only you know what that is. Right? Deuteronomy chapter 4, 
verses 23 and verse 24, okay? Okay? Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image, or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Now, this is, we're talking, uh, this is, we're looking in the Old Testament for instruction and in righteousness. But uh, people, putting the Lord first crosses dispensational lines. Okay? That's not just relegated to the dispensation under the law. Okay? It's not. That crosses dispensational lines. God is to be first in your life. Okay? First. Alright? Okay? He is to be first. And also uh, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 13 on to verse 15, again, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Yes, God has every right to be angry at you when you give what is rightfully his onto something of the world or onto someone else. You are to love God above all things above your father, above your mother, above your son, and above your daughter. You say you can't do that? Then there's a problem. There's a big problem. There's a very big problem. That's a very big problem. Okay. Now, let's look at an example of this about people who put their children above God. Let's look at one of the best examples. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2, we want verses 22 on to verse 30. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if you'll recall, even uh, Samuel's sons didn't live up to their father, didn't live up to uh, what Samuel had done himself. Okay, Even the sons of Samuel did. Okay, Keep that in mind. But, and he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of all of your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is, an, it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. Okay? And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. Now check this out. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt and Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest? to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Considering everything that the Lord has done to you, done for you, church of the living God. If he didn't let you live, you wouldn't be alive. You lost people. You're breathing today because the Lord allows it. You're walking today because the Lord allows it. Verse 29. Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at mine offering, which I have commanded in my habitations? And 
honorest thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all, all, all of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Look at that verse. Well, he rebuked them. Well, yeah, it's like you know, you shouldn't do that. How many, how many times have I seen parents say to their, their son or their daughter who's acting up, now don't do that, but they go on. No, you get the belt and you smack them on the rear end. But no, what will happen today, because it's all about the children, right? It's all about protecting the kids. Yet you got Disney uh, promoting sodomy and transgenderism, right? But yet it's all about the kids. It's all about the kids, really. Really. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, don't do that. They're acting like a little devil. But no discipline. And if you go to discipline them, you know, beat them with the rod, to, you know, to scare the hell out of them, to beat the hell out of them, right? Um, yeah. Uh, someone else seeing that, call the police on you and have you arrested for disciplining, for disciplining your child as you want? It's all for the kids. It's all for the kids. Yet, on television, they promote children all dressed up. They promote pedophilia on television. But it's all about the kids. Yeah. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. Now the Lord saith, Be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. See, Eli. Eli esteemed his sons, who were evil, above the Lord. And the Lord called them on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice, and at mine offerings which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel my people. Eli chose his sons over God. And another example of this, King David. A man after God's own heart. A man after God's own heart. Yes, 2 Samuel chapter 19. 2 Samuel chapter 19, verses 1 under verse 7. This is after King David stole Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. And she was with child. And because of what David did, by the law, he should have been killed. But the Lord let him live. But because of that, the child, the Lord took the child. The Lord killed the child. And I can guarantee you, that child has got one of the best rooms in heaven today, boy. I can tell you that. Because that child was innocent. That child didn't do anything. Okay? That child didn't do anything. But because of what David did... The Lord and his honor, the Lord and his name, if he would have allowed that child. We've talked about that before, okay? Uh, that child, the Lord had to take, okay, because of what David did, all right? So this was after Absalom rose up, okay, and defiled his father's house and stole the kingdom for a time, okay? And he said, uh, King David said unto his men, don't kill this my son Absalom. And of course, Joab, Joab who killed other people so he could secure his own position. Okay? Joab. The wicked Joab. Here's an incident in Scripture, by the way, where God used, uh, allowed someone who was basically a devil to rebuke someone who sought after God's own heart. God allowed, jo God used Joab to rebuke David. Joab! It shows you of where David's mind was at the time. He was a man after God's own heart. Not perfect at all. And yes, the Lord used David. But oh, cost him, look, cost him everything. 
Still used them. Yes, he did. But it wasn't a price that he should have paid a bear. It came at a price. But, 2 Samuel chapter 19, verses 1 on to verse 7. Check this out. And it was told Joab. <laughs> Good godly Joab, yeah. Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom, the son that betrayed him. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. And okay, yeah, yeah. But, but, see, in him grieving, yes, his, his son who betrayed him, rose up against him, was dead. Of course, there'd be some, but see, David Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Oh, if only I had died for thee, oh, Absalom, my son, my son. But see, David was going just a little too far with it. Just a little bit too much. And God, of all people, allowed Joab. Of all people. Okay? And the people get them by stealth that day into the city. And people being ashamed, as people being ashamed, steal away when they flee in battle. But the king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. And Joab, Joab, yeah. and Joab came into the house of the, to the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants which this day have saved thy life and the lives of thy sons and of thy daughters and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines in that thou lovest thine enemies and Absalom made himself an enemy to his father okay in that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends for thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants. For this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived, and all we had died this day, then it had pleased thee well. This rebuke is coming from Joab. Now therefore arise, go forth and speak comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night. And that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from thy youth until now. Yeah. Yeah. Joab, the murderer, the devil, the deceitful, murderous Joab. Rebuked King David. And rightly so. And rightly so. Yeah. Yeah. And why was that? Why was that? In that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends. For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants. For this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived, and all we had died this day, then it had pleased thee well. And now, now go to Second Kings, chapter one. Second Kings, chapter uh, yeah, Second Kings, chapter one. Second Kings, chapter one. Okay. We want verses five on to verse ten. 2 Kings chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 10. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go turn again unto, yeah, uh, 2 Kings chapter 1, yeah. Yeah, uh, one second, brethren. Okay, I, I do this every once in a while. I beg your pardon, I was reading the wrong thing. It's 1 Kings, 1 Kings, chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 10. I beg your pardon. 
I wrote down 2 Kings, but it was actually 1 Kings. My bad. See, that's why I tell you to follow along. Because you right away, you're like, 2 Kings? Brad, this doesn't make any... I read my notes right. See? That's why I tell you. Follow me along. Make sure I ain't skipping a groove. Okay? Praise the Lord. But anyway, 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 10. Okay? Thank you, Lord. All right. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen, and fifty men to run before him. And his father, King David, had not displeased him at any time in saying, Why hast thou done so? And also he was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after... Absalom. Again, King David, one of the failings of King David. Didn't displease him at any time. Okay? And he conferred with Joab, the son of Zariah, and with Abiathar the priest. And they follow and they following Adonijah helped him. But Zadok the priest and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan the prophet, and Shimei, and Ray, and the mighty men which belonged to David were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah slew sheep and oxen and fat cattle by the stone at Zoheleth, which is by Enrogel, and called all his brethren the king's sons, and all the men of Judah the king's servants. <laughs> but... <laughs> Nathan the prophet and Benaiah and the mighty men and Solomon his brother he called not. Ah, the failings of David. Again, David was a man that sought after God's own heart. Many people like to confuse that and say, well, David had the heart of God. Are you, are you, are you crazy? Are you crazy? No, he did not have the heart of God. He sought after God's own heart. He sought David. Wow, he 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 done blew it on many occasions. Okay, okay, he was quite faulty. All right, but he sought after God's own heart. He didn't have the heart of God. That's that borders blasphemy when people say that. Okay, okay, that really does. But there again, the result of number one. He would have, uh, and <laughs> the Lord used Joe out there. Yeah, 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 consider that. Roll that around in your head a little bit. Yeah, God used Joab to rightly rebuke David. Because David, at that time, it's like, yeah, he would have rather everyone that would be dead except for Absalom, his son, who turned himself into an enemy. He went up and lay with all his concubines in the sight of everybody. Now that was a judgment upon David, yes. But in Absalom doing that made him um, a permanent enemy unto his father. Okay? Well, he did. And Joab was used to rebuke David. Fitting. A murderer. For a murderer. Yeah. Yeah. But see... Even David valued his children above God at times. Sure did. Sure did. Okay? Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13. And how did that go for David? And, and yes, yes, Jesus Christ, the son of David, referring unto his kingship, the throne. Okay? But you got to remember, David was a man that sought after the heart of God. He didn't have the heart of God. Anyone says that to you uh, politely, rebuke them sharply. Okay? So like, shut up. That's not true. <laughs> okay? But Proverbs chapter 13, verses 24 and 25. Okay? He that spareth his rod hateth his son. Like I said, you have a time out. Okay? You have a time out. 
But yeah, the kid's going to, or go to your room where, and this is true, you send a kid to their room, they have their, their, their video games, they have their, their they got their, their little health phones, they got all this stuff in their room. Yeah, that's quite a punishment, right? Right? Or give them a time out. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. You know? Oh, I've seen it. So have you. Going to a restaurant or out in public, a little child acting up. It's like, you, you need to get that kid over your knee and smack, swack it on, whack that child on the rear end. But then again, these, these you know, these uh, uh, pacifist little devils out there, oh, he's spanking his son or she's spanking her daughter because she's acting like a little devil. Oh, let's call uh, DCFS on them. And, and look, at the, look at the fruit. Look at the fruit of America when they have engaged in this disgusting thing of child worship. Because it's all for the kids, right? Yeah, all for the kids. Which any one of these would sacrifice so that they themselves would have a better life. Now, not literally, they wouldn't burn them in the fire, but huh? They want to live very vicariously through their children. And then again, you look on the television. You've got 11-year-old girls painted up like whores. Okay? 12-year-old boys to look effeminate. What is that? What is that? It's, it's so Jesuit again. Okay, it's that Jesuit double standard. Oh, they're all oh, children. It's, 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 you know, pedophilia. But yet, at the same time, they're promoting pedophilia and the worship of children while promoting pedophilia. Okay. All right, now, go to Proverbs 23. Oh, we haven't finished that. Excuse me. Okay. Verse 24 and 25 in Proverbs 13. Yes. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. But he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. Verse 25. The righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul. But the belly of the wicked shall want. Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 12 on to verse 19. Apply thine heart unto instruction, and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. And how many people, because they worship their children as little idols and play a dress-up doll with their little daughters or some with their sons. And then people call DCFS. Why, they made children little idols. Withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Okay? My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice. Even my Ah, right there. Right there. Verse 15, boy. Verse 15. My son, if thine heart be wise. Wise. Equated with what? Wisdom. Wisdom. Job 28, 28. Yes, I say this to you quite often. Get it through your head. And unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. The fear of the Lord. So, my son, if... Get your little pen. Circle that if. Okay? Remember, scriptural ifs. Very important. Okay? My son, if thine heart be wise 
fear the Lord. My heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yea, my reins shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. Let not thy heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there is an end. We're all going to give an account of ourselves to God. Yes. And thine expectation shall not be cut off. Hear thou, my son, and be wise. Wisdom, acquainted with the fear of the Lord. True wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Having true wisdom will lead on to true knowledge. Because so many people out there have just knowledge, but have no wisdom. Okay? Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. In the way. Hmm. And guide thine heart in the way. Huh. What is that way? Hmm. Yeah, guide thine heart in the way. Discipline your child, and you shall save his soul from hell. So, are you saying, Brad, that God is for uh, whooping uh, a child on the rear end when they do wrong? Yes! You just saw it! Well, that was the Old Testament. That crosses dispensational lines there, dear friend. Okay? Where is that undone? Oh, oh, what are you saying? Ephesians chapter 6? We'll, we'll get to that. Don't worry. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay? We'll get to that. Okay? Yes. Um, disciplining the child. You know, like down south, you know, okay, you misbehave, boy. You, you, go, you go pick you a twitch so I can whoop your rear end. You know, your mother or your father, the father is the one ought to be uh, doing the whoopings. Or God help you if your mother has to do it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the father will look at you like, give you that look. Okay? Or like, uh, you know, uh, your father or mother is like, okay, we're going to go in here. I'm going to tell you. You misbehave. I ain't going to. You make a scene. You misbehave and don't listen to me. I'm going to take you outside quietly. And you ain't going to be able to stand for a week. Or you ain't uh, going to be able to sit for a week. Give it one warning. And then the child act up. And then what happened? The father could get it up. And it's like, looked at that child. And it's like. <sighs> but see, that's been robbed from our culture today. Okay? It's not in our culture today. Why? Because children are made into little idols. They have put children above God. Do you see? Okay. But Psalm 18, verses 30 on to verse 35. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in Him. For who is God? Save the Lord. Or who is a rock? Save our God. Note that is a lowercase r. Yes, okay. It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand, synonymous with our Lord Jesus Christ, hath, hath and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentle and thy gentleness hath made me great. And this way, okay, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You train up a child in the way of the world. 
<laughs> Hello? 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 McFly, is this on? Hello? Okay, see what happens when you put other things, other people above God? You have America. <laughs> Okay, but Psalm 119, which I read this morning, and it's like, oh, oh, it's like, yeah, Psalm 119, Aleph, Psalm 119, go to Psalm 119, the very beginning, Aleph, if you don't have the heading on there, I'm sorry, we're reading Aleph, okay, Psalm 119, Aleph. That's verses 1 on to verse 8. I'll tell you, I say this to you again, uh, before I'm saying it again. Learn to recognize Psalm 119 by those things right there. Okay? Alright? Psalm 119, a left. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Hmm. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man. Lord pondereth the hearts. Yes, 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 yes. Um, in all things, uh, 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 hold your place here. What does uh, Proverbs three say? Huh? Hmm. That way, okay. Yes, uh, verses five and six. Uh, verses five and seven. On to verse seven. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Okay? Psalm 119. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. The way of the Lord. Who walk in the law of the Lord. The verse described itself. Explained itself. Excuse me. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Because a double-minded man is unstable <laughs> in all his ways. You can't uh, eat at the table of the Lord and eat the table of, at, of devils. It's either or. You can't have uh, your cake and eat it too. Sorry to break it to you. Okay? Okay. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh no, just go how it feels. How it feels good to you. Whatever feels good to you. Because you are the standard. Hey, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Put away the scriptures. You don't need that. Yeah. Yeah, watch out for anyone like that. Like the those scumbag devils that violate <laughs> black of east. Okay? Yeah. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Oh, wretched man that I am! Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. When I shall have learned thy righteous judgments, I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. And of course, about this way, as all of you were waiting for, okay? Because Church of the Living God, what was the first thing you thought of when you heard the way? Let me rephrase that. What ought to have popped into your head right away? Let, let me say it like that. You, you never know. You never know. Okay. John 14. Oh, yeah. Verses 1 on to verse 9. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, especially in the book of John, you take your little pen, 
Go, it's laborious, but do it. Circle all the I M's in the book of John. Wow. Okay. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. The way. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, not a way, the way, the truth, not a truth, and the, not a, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. See, a lot of people who call themselves Christians like to detach certain aspects of God without, without ascribing them unto God. Does that make sense unto you? I'll give you an example. The redemption of the purchased possession. What is the redemption of the purchased possession? The blessed hope. Who is the blessed hope? It's Jesus Christ. He is the resurrection. He said it himself. I am the resurrection. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But yet, see, a lot of Christians like to detach the Lord from these certain aspects, like the redemption of the purchased possession. The redemption of the purchased possession is Jesus Christ. Okay? They're not separate from one another. He is the blessed hope. Okay? Do you understand that? Okay? Yeah, and some some heretics out there make this big to do about charity and like to confuse charity for liberty, saying that they're the same. They're two different things. Okay, Jesus Christ is our charity. Okay, trying to uh, disassociate the two. Okay, Jesus Christ is our liberty. Okay. Again, heretics out there like to uh, try to separate those th uh, those things from the Lord when you can't. It's one and the same in one and the same being. Okay? Hence, hence, you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Okay? Jesus Christ is our salvation, okay? Jesus Christ is the redemption of the purchased possession. Jesus Christ is our liberty. Jesus Christ is our charity, okay? Jesus Christ is our life. Watch out for people who try to separate those things to try to separate that. Watch out for people who do that. Okay? They, those who do that, they put a man above God. They put whatever it is above God. You, might, you, you watch. Keep an eye out for that. Okay? But Jesus Christ, I am the way the truth and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. <laughs> Trinitarians. The Trinity. <laughs> to hell with the Trinity. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, you heard me right. The Trinity is satanic. God is one God comprised of, we're made in the image of God. How is that? We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. God is spirit, 
Holy Ghost, soul, the Father, body, the Word, people. The Word made flesh. Okay? All right? The Trinity does not exist. The Trinity will be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, what is it? The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet? Okay? I might have that mixed up, but yeah. Uh, uh, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. There's your Trinity, which will be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And it's Satan. Satanic. All right? But, verse 8. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? <laughs> uh, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Okay. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? But remember. We mentioned about Ephesians chapter 6. Because, you know, you might be saying, well, <laughs> you're preaching about hating kids or about hating your children. Uh, no. Let's, what does Paul say? Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 on the verse 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Children. No regrets. You know, or children uh, under your father's roof until the age of accountability, whatever that is, that between that's between the Lord and the child. Okay. There are some 18-year-olds, by the way, especially from these um, desensitized children today. Okay. Uh, there are children who are 18 years of age and have no concept of what it means that they've sinned against God? Yeah, yeah. But see, usually too, by that time, they're so entrenched in evil. Huh? But yeah, the age of accountability, you will not find in the scriptures, this is a rabbit trail, you will not find in the scriptures the age of accountability. You will not find it. But there comes a time in a child's life when they will totally comprehend that, wait, okay, God says that's evil, but everyone else says that's good, and I'm doing what everyone else says is good, but what God says is evil, and sin. So in me doing this, I'm sinning against him, okay? Okay. There comes a time in a child's life where they will, when they will understand the deep implication that, yes, they have sinned and they are sinning against God. Okay? And that depends on the child. Some children uh, at maybe 13 or some even as late as 18. Okay? Uh, I can guarantee you, by the time you reach at least your 20s, you're past that age of accountability. I can guarantee you. Unless the rare... Unless someone is um, uh, feeble-minded, maybe, okay? But yeah, okay, but that's a little ra a rabbit trail. But, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. It is. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. But, but, bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And bringing them up in nurture and admonition of the Lord is already, as we have looked at, includes discipline. Whipping them on the rear end when they've done wrong. 
Why? Because if you beat your child with the rod, you know, spank them or something, it's like, hey, boy, you misbehave. You go pick your twitch. Uh, you're going to deliver their soul from hell. You're bringing them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. See, it crosses dispensational lines. Okay? All right? But see, the world calls good evil and evil good. All right? All right? All right? And Proverbs 22. Okay? Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22, verses 3 on to verse 6. Proverbs 22, verses 3 on to verse 6. Proverbs 22, verses 3 on to verse 6. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Uh, where is a prudent man? Prudence is always is linked with being wise, wise and prudent. Okay, there are those who are wise and prudent, but are of the world, because our Lord says, uh, "You have hid these things from the wise and prudent, and have uh, delivered it, delivered it." Onto babes, okay, okay. But scripturally, to be wise is to be prudent, and wisdom is what? For wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So when you have a prudent man foreseeth the evil, and hideth himself, uh, we are to hide ourselves in who? Jesus Christ, through the scriptures, okay, okay. Okay? But the simple pass on and are punished. And verse 4 explains verse 3 about hiding. Who are, who are we hiding in? By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. Thorns and snares, worldly things that choke the word. Okay? Thorns and snares? Hmm? Okay? Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Noting that in verse 5, keeping his soul, uh, noting to us the dispensational dis difference, okay? This is instruction in righteousness because we are, we don't keep it, we're not keeping our soul today in this dispensation. Okay? Why? We are sealed until until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. We are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Okay? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? We are keeping our soul today. See, this notes the difference in dispensation. You gotta rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? But verse six. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Okay? And while we're here, while we're here, what does that include? Okay? What does that include? Again, Proverbs 13, verse 24, He that spareth his rod hateth his son. You hate your children. If you're going to let them behave like little devils without any discipline, without the nurture and admonition of the Lord, you hate your children when you withhold from them Jesus Christ. Yes, you do. I don't care if you're a father and mother, single father, single mother. You withhold from your child the true Lord Jesus Christ of the Scriptures. You are doing nothing but hating your children. And hey, buddy, look at the fruit of that today. And no matter what country you are in, when you worship your children more than God, when you put anything above the love that is supposed to be for God only, whatever it is, Okay? All right? So, 
Okay, when we looked here in Proverbs 22, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. You bring them up in the world, how's that working for you? You bring them up in satanic Christianity, how's that go for you? Bringing them up by having Jesuits uh, teach them in schools. You know what they're teaching kids today? Evolution? The kids, they, most of them, a majority of them, they can't even name uh, uh, um, a death camp from the Holocaust. Okay? They're not taught that there was a religious aspect of the Civil War. <laughs> They're taught evolution. They're taught that gay is okay. That they were actually born a woman, so th that they teach transgenderism. <laughs> you want to talk about hating your children? Get your children out of school for the love of Christ. Oh. And you know what's worse? Okay, public and private school, fine, yeah, those, those, they're, they're, they're all controlled by the Jesuits. But a Christian school? <laughs> God help you. God help you, man. God help you. Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Thank you, Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 under verse 20. Verses 15 on to verse... <laughs> yeah, 15 on to verse 20. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. And that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. This is for another dispensation. We're looking at this for instruction in righteousness. But seeking the Lord thy God above all things first and foremost, uh, that, dis that crosses dispensational lines. And if anyone else tells you otherwise, mark them and get away from them because they're a heretic. Okay? But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. What are these other gods? What are these other gods? Always little statues? No. No. Yes. Little marionette statues? Yes. Little <laughs> things of Buddha? Yes. 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 But that's not all. That's not what it's relegated to only. He shall be his God. It's no one good and evil. The one that you worship or that you look at in the mirror. The little idol that you're making your child. Fluffy. Your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to possess it. To over Jordan to go to possess it. Excuse me. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is life. He is life. He is everything. And he demands to be first in your life. And what happens when you don't put him first in your life? Oh, wretched man that I am. Unfortunately, because... We are housed, our spirit and soul are housed within the sagging skin suit, the flesh. It's a constant battle between spirit and flesh. It's a daily struggle. We can't walk 
24 hours a day, seven days a week, perfectly. No, we can't. That's where God's grace comes in. Okay? We can't. But that does not give you an excuse. Okay? We are to strive. And our heart is to be perfect with the Lord. We are to be like David in that respect. To be a people, a man or woman, after going after God's own heart. Okay? And it's choose life. Choose life. God's not pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to do things. Neither is Satan. I keep telling you that. You got to make the right choices, man. You got to make the right choices. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. You think that's changed today in this dispensation? That we're not to cleave unto him? Huh? You think that's changed? You think that's changed? You know, Christianity has made it a cliché. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. I count all things, the loss of all things, I count them as dung, that I may win Christ Jesus, not gain his salvation, but that he may have Christ. And see, Christianity, uh, these Christians in the church buildings, they've made that a cliche. Okay? They have trivialized it. The pure beauty and truth of God's word They've made it a cliche. Yes, they have. And see, they do that with their own benefit in mind. Not that they love God. See. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life. And the, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Specifically being said unto the children of Israel, yes, but I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is our life. Length of days. You, you are watching there, sitting there, steaming, uh, because the Lord has allowed you to do so. Okay? All right? <laughs> I mean, th th this is not that difficult. This is not that difficult, dear friend. It really isn't, okay? But what happens? What happens? What happens? What is the result? We see it. But what is the result? When people don't put God first... Whatever it is, we're looking at children because that that touches close to home. How many of you said, well, I'll do anything for my children? But I won't do that. I won't put God above my children. But my children come before God. Ooh. 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 And we, we, we saw in Ephesians, we are to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Yes. But what happens when you bring them up and you try to and they rebel against you? You have to cut them off. Because they love the world, not God. That doesn't mean that you hate them or anything. You love them. You pray for them. Yes. 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 But God, even see, and see, putting the finger on this very thing. Okay? Okay? I can't have children. It's impossible even if my wife were able, I can't. And that's all you need to know. Okay? I can't have kids. Okay? I can't. But see, how many of you fathers, how many of you fathers would put your Isaac on the altar? Not that the Lord would ask you to sacrifice your son to him. No, it doesn't work that way. The point is, do you lo love us me more than these? Whatever your name is, son of whomever you are, lovest thou me more than these? 
Yay, Lord, you know that I love you, okay? Yeah? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Not yourself. Feed my sheep. Okay? Well, what happens when the order is perversed? What happens? What has happened when you have a, a nation of child worshipers? So grotesque. It's all about the kids. And then you look on the television with the youth and the young kids dressing. There are 11 year old girls out there who look like they're in their 20s and dressed up like whores. The same with little boys. It's Jesuit. Saying, oh, oh, we're all against, uh, you know, the abuse of children. But yet they promote it through pedophilia and things like that. Just like the abuse of women. Okay? Oh, we're against abusing women. But yet they, they preach, they, they promote uh, feminism. They're against the abuse of children. But yet they promote pedophilia. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but what happens? What's the result? What's the result? Not doing it God's way? Putting whatever it is, whatever it is. Children is the best example. That's why we're focusing on that. But what is your Isaac that you're not putting on the altar? What is your Isaac? All for Jesus I surrender. But not that thing. What's the result? I'll tell you what the result is. How about I, I don't tell you anything. I'm not going to say one thing to you about what the result is. Uh, Proverbs 11. Uh, uh, Proverbs 30. Verses 11 on to verse 17. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes. And their eyelids li lift, are lifted up. Lofty. Lifted up. You see that in that verse? That's what lofty means, okay? There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Oh, it's cute for a, a little five-year-old girl saying it. Don't, don't do this. But on YouTube here and those, those shorts things, you know, those like 30-second videos that they got, those TikToks, a little five-year-old girl cursing. Little five-year-old girl wearing short shorts. Oh, it's all about the children. But you're going to dress your five-year-old little daughter in short shorts? You disgusting. Oh. Yeah. The horse leech hath two daughters crying, give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not, it is enough. The grave. The grave. People who are dead in trespasses and sin. The barren womb. No life. Okay? The earth that is not filled with water. Chapped. No nourishment. And the fire that saith not, it is enough. There, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother. Okay? You're going to rebel against, my, uh, against your father and mother? We looked in Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your mother and father, uh, father and mother, for this is right. Okay? But the eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the raven, which was an unclean animal, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles, also another unclean bird, shall eat it. In 
and also <laughs> that is what is the result of turning your children into idols and worshiping your children oh that they may have what I never had that's selfish that's self-centered that's pride living vicariously through your children and making them twofold more the child of hell than you ever were. And yes, we want the things good for our children of the Lord, not of this world. Not what the world offers you. Uh, because, and again, what's what else is more the fruit of that? Huh? What else is more the fruit of that? Oh, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Women rule over them. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. You'll do anything for children. You'll endanger your own life for children. And yes, as a mother and a father, as a father and a mother, excuse me, yes, you want to protect your children, but you're going, but the, how many of you out there, you lost people? You do contrary to what God would have you to do for your child's sake? No. And the result of that is generation that we have today, which we just looked at in the Proverbs. And also in Jeremiah chapter 7, Jeremiah chapter 7, this is 18 and 19. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 18 and 19. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger? Saith the Lord, do not do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Children got, gather the wood. I want it. I gotta have it. Give it, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give so they do, they they go into debt. Owe no man anything. Okay? For their children's sake. And see, when the child says, I want, I want, I want. And the fathers kindle the fire, and the women need cakes, need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. It's talking about when a child is the one who is actually controlling the father and mother for worldly things. And that results on the, them, the father and mother, going to the world, and who is the little g-god of this world? That's what happens when you love your children more than you ought to love God. Okay? And we're not talking about you, uh, that you don't love your children. Not at all. Not at all. If you love the Lord, you would love your children aright. But if you don't love the Lord, I'm saying it. You lost people who would die for your children, you don't love them. Why? Because you're withholding from them Jesus Christ. Or you're doing worse. You're giving to them a false Christ. You know, the atheist, okay? Seriously, the atheist who raises their children to have nothing to do with God, okay? That's bad. Oh, oh, well, look at... But the parents that are raising their children in the church buildings... May God forgive you of the evil of your ways. Because the churches are controlled by the Jesuits. You're giving your children to Satan. While you would take a bullet for your children, you would step in front of a train for your children, but yet you're withholding from them Jesus Christ. Brad, you don't have children. No, you're right, I don't. I'll give you that. 
But Jesus Christ is my life. And he has given me his word and I can read. So are you going to deny what God says in order to make your child happy? Oh. Oh. There, 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 you done said it, right? Yes, I did. You're going to make yourself happy? Are you going to deny God to make yourself happy? How many of us do that? Jeremiah chapter 7 verses 18 and 19 like I said. That's the result when the uh, children rule the parents. That's what happens when the children rule, rule the parents. And go to Luke chapter 14 now. Go to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Okay. Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come on to me, for as such is the kingdom of heaven. Right? God's not against children or the love of, for children. No. What is he against? Luke chapter 14, verses 25 on to verse 33. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, I, I've dealt with this from atheists. Uh, you're saying that God's saying to hate people. No. Well, it says hate. Yes, it does. But he's not saying to, like, you go up to your mother or father or your children, I hate you. No. That's not what he is saying. That's not what he is saying. What he is saying is, if you are putting them before the Lord, you're hating God. That's what he's saying. Okay? If any man come to me, okay, come to me, Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, okay? He is God. Uh, the Lord, uh, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, okay? God first. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Okay? That and that people's like, well, that's for that, Brad, you're dispensational. Uh, that's uh, that crosses dispensational lines. Okay? Paul. Paul. Okay? What did Paul say? Okay, what did Paul say? I count all things law as dung. All lo the loss of all things is dung that I may win Christ. Okay? He's not saying that you are to hate them. Okay? No. God forbid. No. What he is saying, if any man come to me, me, Jesus Christ, if you love father, wife, mother, wife, children, brethren, sisters, and your own life above him, you're actually hating God. That's what he's saying. Not that you hate your father and mother, or else that would contradict Ephesians 6. Okay? That would contradict, no, what he is saying is, Okay, you, uh, you put these people, you put your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your brethren, your sisters, and your own life above him, you hate him. You're showing hate towards him. And for those of you of the church of the living God, you're saved, born again, converted. How are you supposed to get along with your lost family? Oh, deny scripture. Ain't happening, buddy. See, when you do, and you deny what God has said to make peace, you're showing hate toward the Lord. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? And then these Christians, well, God doesn't want me to crawl into a casket and die. But he is our life. You get rid of that, that 
He takes you out of that so that He can give you another Himself. <laughs> you are to die to yourself. You are to mortify, put down, kill the flesh. Yes. And see, when someone said, well, God doesn't want me to get into a coffin and die, that, you're, you're making the world the standard. Not the Lord. And you're a King James Bible believing Christian. Yeah. Yeah, you're fake. That's what you is. You're fake. God doesn't want me to get into a coffin and die. Uh, Christ is our life. Okay, he takes you out of one life of the world of hell and takes you onto himself, his life itself. You're crazy. God doesn't want me to live in a coffin. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He is life. Someone who says that is showing that they love the world, not God. Less happily, after that, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that beheld, behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, cannot be my disciple. All to Jesus I surrender, except that. And Paul, look at the life Paul lived. He, he, was, he endured uh, beatings, threatenings uh, from among false brethren. He was in the deep for a day and a night. Okay? Look at what happened to Paul. But look at the life in Christ that he lived. He, 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 he was going right up the middle. That's where life is, and that life is Jesus Christ. This, dear friend, crosses dispensational lines. You, Paul is our example, okay? Okay? All right? And what's, uh, what, what, what do I got here? Okay? And uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. We want verses 6 on to verse 11. Okay? If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. Namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth, thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people, and thou shalt stone him with stones that he die because he hath, hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear, and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. So, under the law, if someone were to entice you, which was what? Uh, thy mother or thy, uh, thy brother... Uh, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, wanting to entice you to serve other gods, under the law you were to kill them. We don't do that today. Why? Because vengeance is mine. 
I will repay, saith the Lord. And also, while we're in at this, go to Deuteronomy now, chapter 21. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 21. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 21. We've already touched verses corresponding with this, okay? But Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 18 on to verse 21. Under the law. We don't do it like this today. Why? Why? Because the debt for sin has been paid with the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the blood that He shed on the cross. And it is up to the Lord. The Lord is the revenger of all such. Okay? The Lord. Vengeance belongeth unto the Lord. Not unto you and I. Okay? But Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 18 on to verse 21. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place, and they shall say unto the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious, he will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Glutton. Glutton. Indulging in, you can have a worldly a gluttony. A gluttony associated with uh, eating too much food, okay? Yes, but gluttony is not just about overeating the food. Uh, you can have gl uh, worldly gluttony, uh, having too much of a good thing, and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put away, put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. And in Revelation chapter 17, it talks about how all the nations were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And we already read about how uh, the Children uh, uh, bring the wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the mothers make uh, need their uh, uh, d uh, dough to make cakes onto the queen of heaven. You get it? Okay? So, if your son, your daughter, is a glutton and a drunkard, drinking, chosen to drink the wine, Made their choice, you know, because you because in Ephesians chapter six, uh, fathers, mothers, you are to bring up your children and nurture and admonition of the Lord. Okay, all right, we've already covered that. But see, you got to remember too that was under the dispensation of the law. The perfect sacrifice for sins was not yet offered. And also that today, since the perfect sacrifice for sins has been made, okay, vengeance belongs unto the Lord. And also you got to remember about what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Under the law, Israel was God's chosen people, the apple of God's eye, still to this day, to be a witness unto the nations. Okay? All right, you have to remember that. Israel was called out to be God's witnesses unto all the nations. As we, the church of the living God, we are called out of Egypt, the world, to be witnesses unto the lost. Okay? Today, we don't do that. Why? Because the sin that has been paid. Okay? The dispensation changed. Okay? But see, nations at that time. See, God brought Israel out Read Deuteronomy chapter 4, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 4. Israel was called out to be God's witnesses unto the nations. The nations put children on pedestals and worshipped them and uh, treated them as idols. They also sacrificed their children unto Moloch and stuff like that. But it's like, wait, they, 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 wait, 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 wait. That's, that's confusion, isn't it? They loved their children, but yet they would sacrifice them Onto devils. Why? So they can benefit themselves. Live vicariously through their children? Have you ever wondered? Have you ever wondered? Why? 
children of Israel, as a judgment, ate their own children? Have you ever wondered? We're getting a little ahead of ourselves, okay? Uh, Exodus chapter twi- uh, 20, verse 12. Very quick. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Okay? Have that in the parentheses. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that the days that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Okay? But when they have decided to go the way of the world, today, what do you do? You cut them off. It's like, look, son. Look, my daughter, I love you. We, we brought you up in nurture and admonition of the Lord, but you have rejected that. You have chosen the way of the world. We love you. We're going to pray for you, but we have to, we, we can't, we can't, we have to, you have to go away. But I'm your son. I'm God first. You would choose God over me? Yes. Yes. If my wife chose the world over the Lord, sorry, sorry, I can't be around you. If I chose the world, my wife, Brad, I choose God first. Okay. But see, that extreme was there as a witness unto the nations. We don't do that today because it is finished. Okay? And everyone is going to give an account of themselves to God. Okay? And under that dispensation, there was no eternal security. Okay? A continual animal sacrifice had to be made. Okay? You've got to keep that in mind principle for us that we can take away if someone your mother your father your son or your daughter chooses the way of the world and Satan okay and you're of the church of the living God who are you going to choose I choose my son I choose my daughter then okay they're of the world they're of the world they've made their choice okay you brought them up, all right? But they are there, and you're going to, what are you going to do? You're going to deny the scripture in order to make peace? You're choosing your children, you're choosing your wife, your father, your mother, your husband over the Lord. Is your Isaac on the altar? Is your Isaac on the altar? As I, Psalm 106. Psalm 106. Psalm 106. I'm, by the way, I'm very aware that this video will be misunderstood. But those of you who are saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, you'll get it. Psalm 106, verses 34 and verse 41. Psalm 106, verses 34 and verse 41. See, what happens when you a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? What happens when you compromise and go against the God who gave himself for you and loved you and saved you? Talking under the church of the living God. And you are going to make peace with those who have chosen the devil even if those are your own children? You're going to choose them above the Lord? Whatever your Isaac is, you're going to choose that above the Lord? So, uh, Psalm 106, verses 34 on verse 41. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Now see, this is talking about child sacrifice, which the children of Israel did, and which the heathen around, around them, which the Lord called them out of Egypt to do, okay? And, and shed innocent blood. So, sacrificing their little children 
to Moloch and stuff like that. Them themselves being innocent of their parents' transgression, offering them unto Satan. See? Okay? Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance, and he gave them into the hand of the heathen, and they that hated them, Satan, ruled over them. Look at that. Don't look at me. Look at that text. You're going to dress your daughter up as a little whore. You're going to pamper your son and, and, and uh, go against the scriptures in order to please your son. You're going to go against what God says to please your children. Hmm. 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 You're going to sacrifice them. There's no children sa child sacrifice today. Uh, you're sacrificing on to devils when you give your children on to their desires without you bringing them up in the nurture of the Lord. You withhold Christ from them and allow them to go onto the world to dress up in beauty pageants when they're five years old. Yelling at your son in a baseball field because they can't catch a ball because they're more interested in watching butterflies or something like that. It's a form. It's a form of sacrificing your children unto devils by giving them unto worldly things. Okay? All right? And now go to 2 Kings chapter 17. 2 Kings chapter 17. 2 Kings chapter 17. Got to watch the time limit now. We've still got a lot more to go. 2 Kings chapter 17. Verse 6 on to verse 7. In the ninth year of Ahoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria, and placed them in Halath and in Habor by the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. For so it was, that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things which were not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways, and keep my commandments and my statutes, according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, and which I sent to you by my servants the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks, like to the neck of their fathers, that did not believe in the Lord their God. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers, and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity, and became vain, and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire 
and used divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. See, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was never for child sacrifice. What do you think you're doing when you are giving your children over onto the world to do the worldly things? You're sacrificing onto devils. You're sacrificing onto the devil. Not literally. Oh, but spiritually you sure are. You sure are. And and hey, uh, Genesis chapter 22. Okay, Genesis chapter 22. Okay, remember what we started out with? Okay, Genesis chapter 22. The Lord God said unto Abraham, you know, and verse 2, and he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Uh, Genesis chapter 22, verses 10 on to verse 14. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. God told Abraham to do it. And Abraham loved the Lord and trusted the Lord above all things that even his promised son he was willing to offer unto him because the Lord told him because he believed what verse 8 and Abraham said my son God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering so they went both of them together Abraham believed in his heart so, okay Lord you promised me Isaac, but you told me to give him up to you. I don't know how, I don't, but I trust you. I love you. I trust you. You're going to make it good. So I'm going to do, out of love and trust, I'm going to kill. I'm going to do this. I'm putting everything on you because you are right and I put you first. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Whoa! Abraham! Abraham! And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. Now, People will look at verse 12 and say, well, see, God doesn't know everything. Uh, yes, he does. What is Brad, check out that video that we talk about this in depth. Um, the knowing here is a relationship. God knew what Abraham would do. But see, a relationship, a loving relationship of trust on the Father, that is what now I know that thou fearest God. Lovest thou me more than these? That's what that is. Abraham was willing to give unto God Isaac. Hence, setting his love for God above his own son. So the no there is not that God didn't know that Abraham feared the Lord. God knew what Abraham was going to do. Absolutely. The no there is relational. Not that God, if God doesn't know everything, then why serve him? If we don't serve a God who knows everything, why are you serving? Why do you love him? Okay? God knows everything. God knows the hearts of all men. Not all by a relationship, but he knows the hearts. He knows everything. So, the no there is not, it's impossible that God didn't know what he was going to do. The no is the relationship. Now I know that thou fearest God. Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Feed my sheep. That's what that is, okay? That's what that is. Verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. 
And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said this day, in the mount of the Lord shall it be seen. God provided a ram in the thicket. But see, lovest thou me more than these? I would do anything for the Lord, but I won't do that. All to Jesus I surrender, except the little thing that's my pet little sin. It's not what our Lord requires, dear friend. It's not what our Lord requires, okay? It's not what our Lord requires at all, okay? And also, too, okay, we're, we're going to have to skip a little here. We're going to have to skip a little here, okay? Uh, no, we can't. We can't. Deuteronomy chapters, uh, yeah, yeah, we can. We're going to have to. We're going to have to skip a little because got to watch out for the time here. But now go to Deuteronomy chapter 3 or 32. Oh, wait, wait. Wait. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. I don't want to make a two-part video. But if we got to make a two-part video, then we're going to make a two-part video. I don't want to do a two-part video. But Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 3 on to verse 12. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 3 on to verse 12. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, Father and mother are to teach the children, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. That's why you see the Jewish people wearing that box on their forehead. That's where they get that, okay? And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thine house, and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which, with, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt and from the house of bondage. Then beware, when Lord, who has done all things for you, church of the living God, and you are to love him first and foremost, then beware, then beware, lest you love something other and above the Lord. Okay? Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Very, 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 very dangerous. Okay? Very dangerous. And see, now go to Micah chapter 6. Go to Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. Okay? See, because of how the children of Israel got messed up and went after Baal and other gods and got defiled, okay? They had this mentality. M Micah chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 9. Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. Plead as a lawyer pleads. Not like, oh, please. No, it's a lawyer. It's like making a case against. That's what that means, okay? Oh, my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. See, false prophets came around saying, you got to sacrifice your children. Okay, you want to make God happy? Huh? Sacrifice your children. Satan 
all this will I give thee. If thou fall down and worship me, all will be thine. Okay? For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteous that, that, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. And the response is, okay? Wherewith, wherewith shall I come before the Lord? And how and how my and bow myself before the high God? Okay? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with a cat with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Why were they saying that? Because they were polluted with devils, with heresies, where they, they were offering their children on the Moloch. Okay? And what does God say? God never wanted child sacrifice. Never. The sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, okay? Animal sacrifices were there for covering sins and thanks offerings. Yes, because Jesus Christ hadn't died on the cross yet. Okay, you know, uh, marking the dispensation. But, verse 8, He hath shewed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. The Lord's voice crieth unto the city, the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might, and with all thy strength. Animal sacrifices were there because the sacrifices for sin, the sacrifice for sins, hadn't been made yet. Okay? But see, they were saying that because, you know, they were... They were offering, they, they went after other gods. They got polluted with other things. Why? Because they didn't put God first. They put themselves first. So because they put themselves first, their children whom they love so much, they offered them onto devils. Okay? Now, this is obviously got this obviously has to be a part two video. So I'm going to stop this video right here right now. Then we're going to get into part two. OK, I don't like doing two part videos, but we can't miss anything in this. So that's going to be it for this one. For part one, stick around for part two. Your Isaac on the altar, part two. Okay, please check out part one, which will be in the description box, okay? We left off talking, uh, we had just finished Micah chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 9, okay? So, we are now picking up in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 15 on to verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 15 on to verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Okay, watch the first video, part one. Okay, watch that first. All right, please watch part one first. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 32. We want verses 15 on to verse 22. See, the children of Israel had gotten so messed up that they were that they had gone away from God and were worshiping themselves, worshiping strange gods. They were worshiping Satan. They had gotten away from God because they didn't put God first in their lives and they put other things above God. And in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 15 on to verse 22, but Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. They, uh, the, with abominations, provoked they him to anger. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. They sacrificed their sons and daughters unto devils, which God had wanted no part of. Absolutely not. But see, that's because Israel got away from putting God first. And that was the consequence of it. See? Okay? Of the rock, capital R, that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them, because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in, in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which be which with those that are not a people. And I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. A foolish nation denoting those who are not of God, obviously. Also, this is talking about how this is also, you can tie this in, about how the gospel would go on to the Gentiles to make the Jews jealous, okay? Verse 22, For fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Jeshurun, fat, well-favored, well-nourished. And when things were going well, what happened? What happened? They worshipped themselves. They went after other gods in their prosperity. See, and Satan came along in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Verses 5 on to verse 7. Luke chapter 4. Come on, fingers work with me. Luke chapter 4. <laughs> if I can get there. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 7. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And that's exactly what the devil is offering. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him through the Christian church buildings, which don't preach to you the true God, our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ of the Scriptures. But see, people who don't put God first in their lives, who do not love the Lord their God, when you put something other than God first, you know what you're like? You know what you're like? Uh, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. you got to remember this. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 44 on to verse 45. See, when you are putting whatever it is above the love of God, okay? This is what you're doing. This is, this is who you are acting like. Uh, John chapter 8, verses 44 and verse 45. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. What were the lusts of the devil? Oh, Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. You ought to know this one by heart. Isaiah chapter 14. Verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? That's what Lucifer means. 
How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will ascend into heaven, excuse me. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will, five times, be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And there it is. There it is. When you aren't putting God first, okay, when God is not first, you're saying, I will, I will. Brethren, when you ignore God, when you choose whatever it is, you will do anything for the Lord, but you won't do that. You're putting yourself above God. I will be like the Most High. You're putting whatever your Isaac is, you're putting your Isaac above God. Whatever it is, God hates it. Now, as the church of the living God, we, 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 we sin in that. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. But see, God is within us. He chastens us. When we get out of fellowship, when we get out of line, when we set something other than the Lord first, oh, he comes in and rebukes us and chastens us. Yeah, amen, he, amen, he does. But see, God doesn't remove the consequences from those things, does he? No, he doesn't. Sometimes he will, but not all the time. <laughs> right? And now go to Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56, verses 9 on to verse 12. All ye beasts of the field come to devour, yea, all ye beasts of the forest, in the forest. His watchmen are blind, they are all ignorant, they are all dumb dogs, they cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou wake out of your sleep? Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain, from his quarter. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. Greedy, covetous. See, that's, that's at the root of it. That's at the root of all this. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. Verses 9 on to verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 6. Verses 9 on to verse 13. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a mine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the basket. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of the young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days, and their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. Why? For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. Everyone is given to covetousness. Look at America. Look at America and the child worship that happens today in America. It's all about you. It's not about the children. You'll do everything for your children, right? But you won't go to Christ. You'll withhold Jesus Christ from your children. You'll, 
You'll sacrifice the word of the Lord in order to please your children. You'll sacrifice the Lord for whatever it is that you put above the Lord. Won't you? Won't you? And, you know, while we're at it, Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 8 on to verse 12. How, how do ye say, we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? Yeah, what wisdom is in them? Not to fear the Lord. Not to fear the Lord. The wise men are ashamed. <laughs> oh, where, where, where are we? Okay. Where are we? Yeah. Excuse me, verse 10. Therefore, did we, re yeah, the wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them? Therefore will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. From the prophet even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. Covetous. Why else would people sacrifice children unto devils if it wasn't for a covetous Selfish, self-serving gain. Why else? Why else? Why else do uh, parents say, I want for my children what I didn't have? That's self-serving. And not in the true in, uh, in, uh, interest of, of the child. You give them the Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures. That's the greatest thing, that's the greatest gift you can ever give to your children. The Lord Jesus Christ. But yet, you're willing to go to your, your ballet pageants, your baseball, basketball, football games, but yet withhold Christ from them. And, and why is it like that with these people? Why? Isaiah chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. But, bru but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed, neither, been bo neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. The whole head is sick, and the heart is faint. That is what happens. That is the result of a people who put other, thi other things, whatever it is, before God. And you, Church of the Living God, what happens to us when we let other things in to our lives and we put them before the love of God in our lives? Your Isaac on the altar? What's your Isaac? Do you love the Lord that much and trust Him that much hmm? that you would be willing to put that one thing, whatever it is, on the altar? Whatever it is? Hmm? Okay? Now, where are we? Where are we? Psalm 10. Psalm 10. Psalm 10. <laughs> yeah, God, God doesn't want me to live in a coffin. Psalm 10, verses 1 on verse 7. Why standest thou far off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride, I, 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 me, 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 doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Right, why? Because 
I, 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 me, me, me. I will be like the Most High. You are of your father the devil. And when someone of the Church of the Living God does that, we're behaving foolishly. We're behaving as if we are saying in our hearts, there is no God. Yeah. Brethren, sisters, what aren't you putting on the altar? What, what am I not putting on the altar? Do you love God first? You say you do. But what happens when the Lord demands you to put that Isaac of yours on the altar? I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. His ways, verse 5, his ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I will be like the Most High. Ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil, right? For I, I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Yeah. yeah. And Luke chapter 12, just one verse. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, just one verse. Luke chapter 12, verse, just one verse, verse 15. Our Lord Jesus Christ warning. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the, of the things which he possesseth. And they, and they bless the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. God hates covetousness. And it is nothing but a form of self-serving covetousness when you turn your children into an idol and worship them and they in turn rule you. It is nothing but a form of self-serving covetousness when you put whatever it is above God. And God requires that you put him first in all things. God requires it. And 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. We want verses 3 on to verse 8. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thy, thyself. Gain is godliness. Now, right away, we always think of money, right? But there are other types of gain that these people consider godly. Subscribers, views, popularity, friends, wardrobe, stuff, lands, books, whatever. It's not just relegated to money. Remember that. What does Paul say? But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Food. I have esteemed thy word above my necessary food. Raiment, be clothed with humility. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And again, of course, there are uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 16. 
They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. You say that you know God, love Him, but yet you go to the world and get comfort from the world and entertainment from the world, and yet you're a Christian, right? And letting your Christian children indulge in pool parties and oh, slumbers and... and oh. Okay. And Philippians, just one verse, Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, just one verse, you know, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Contentment with Christ and Christ alone, with Him. He is our life. He is our everything. Is your Isaac on the altar yet? Hmm? And 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're almost done. We're getting there. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 19 on to verse 24. Okay. About people worshiping idols. Whatever that idol may be, whether it's an actual statue or the one that you look at in the mirror, what, look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 19 on to verse 24. What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered to, in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the tables of devils. You can't have it both ways. It's either or. You can't have it both ways, dear friend. We are to come out from among them and be, there, be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Okay? Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than He? <laughs> and here's the excuse that so many of them make when they go to worldly satanic things. Okay? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things that if I not... Yeah, you got liberty. Yeah, it's a liberty issue. Yeah, yeah, but all things are all things are lawful for me. Yeah, but all things are not expedient. You who use that, you use that to justify your sin. You don't even know what true liberty is. Liberty to you is a construct of what you make it out to be, not what Christ Jesus has called it in His Word, and that is He Himself. Okay. And right here, let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. And that doesn't mean go after someone else's wealth, okay? What the Lord gives you, you to go and share it, not hoard it. And see, when these people were offering these things, these uh, are to devils, okay? When they were off, they were their sacrifices. They were sacrificing their children onto devils. Okay, okay. Why were they doing that? To appease their gods? No, for a selfish gain. They sacrificed onto devils. They sacrificed their children onto devils for their own benefit. Their own little children that they love so much, but yet they love themselves more. They love themselves more and their own covetousness that they were willing to sacrifice their children unto devils. I want for them what I never had. That's pride. That's selfish. Okay? If, you, if you're saved, you're newly saved, and you say, well, you're like, let's say you're a father and you just got saved. It's like, well, I, I, want, I want my children to have to be 
to have the Lord to be saved. Yes, praise the Lord. Okay, praise the Lord. But like I said, how many, how many out there? I want for my children what I never had. And yet, you turn them into little idols in doing so. And in turn, they turn around and rule you. And of course, like I, like I mentioned to you, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore... Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Leviticus chapter 18, verses 21 on to verse... Uh, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 21. Okay, that's what it was. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 21. Okay? Leviticus 18, verse 21. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. And see, what was happening, people were sacrificing unto Moloch, their children, and saying it was for God. And they were doing it for their own selfish gain, for their own benefit, not because they loved, God forbid. No, uh, Leviticus chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 5. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Moloch, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones, and I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people, because he hath given of his seed unto Moloch, to defile my sanctuary, and to profane my holy name. I'm doing this in the name of the Lord. Sacrificing children unto the name of the Lord? God forbid! But see, but see what we have looked at. The children of Israel were doing that exact thing, saying, "Okay, I'm going to sacrifice on the Moloch that uh, he that God may give me good field to uh, good uh, crops or give me prosperity, health and wealth." So, hey, 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 son, I love you, but you're going to be my blessing because I'm going to sacrifice you to Moloch. What do you think you're doing? When you're uh, giving your, so your sons, your daughters over onto the world so that you may glory in their accomplishments. What in the name of God do you think you are doing? You're sacrificing on to devils so that you may glory in their flesh. God help you. God help you. Verse 4. And if the people of the land do in any ways hide their eyes from the man, when he giveth of his seed unto Moloch, and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man and against his family, and will cut him off, and all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Moloch, with Moloch from among their people. And hello, look at America. That's exactly what is happening today with these parents that are giving their children onto the world, but yet withholding the, uh, withholding the Lord Jesus Christ from them, but yet giving them the world. You're sacrificing them onto devils for your own gain. That's exactly what you're doing. Exactly what you're doing. 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11. 
and see what's going on here in America is coming from the top from the top because our nation is a Jesuit nation controlled by the Vatican right first Kings chapter 11 verses 1 on to verse 8 but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh women of Moab women of the Moabites Ammonites Edomites Zidonians and Hittites of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall ye come in, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after other gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And because he did that, he put uh, these strange women above God. What happened? And he had 700 wives, princesses, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his hearts after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Eshtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and in, and in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Solomon loved women above God. Just as we looked at Eli, who loved his sons more than he loved God. Okay? David, okay, he, he fell in that. He loved, uh, he wished, we already looked at that in the previous video. I might put these two together. They might not be a two-parter, just so you know. But as we have looked at previously, even David fell victim for that, wishing that all his men were killed so long as Absalom would have made it. And God used Joab, the devil, to, a devil to rebuke him on it. Right here. Solomon loved women more than God. And what happened because of that? Turned away his heart and he built all this stuff. Why do you what why do you that's what Ecclesiastes is about, okay? When Solomon was old, okay? That's what that's about. Alright, dear friend? Alright? All right? Now, Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32. Okay? See, King Solomon, because he went after all these other gods, as king, that was the beginning of the end. And of course, after Solomon, uh, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, the kingdoms were divided after that. Until Jesus Christ comes back with us, okay, and rules and reigns at Jerusalem for a thousand years in peace, and then lets uh, loose Satan, and then finally gets rid of him forever, and then the final seven, seven dispensation eternity comes in, okay, but Israel only had two kings and where the entirety of Israel was united, okay, David and Solomon, okay, and the third will be, the third will be our Lord Jesus Christ, son of David. Okay, get it? All right. But after Solomon, because of how he went away after other gods and did all that, the kingdom got divided. Okay? See what a little leaven does 
when you bring it into the lump. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 32, verses 32 on to verse 35. Okay? For the children of Israel and the children of Judah have only done evil before me from their youth. For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, saith the Lord. For this city hath been to me as a provocation of mine anger and of my fury from the day that they built it even until this day, that I should remove it from before my face. Because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Judah, which they have done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets, and the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And they have turned unto me the back, and not the face, though I taught them, rising up early and teaching them. Yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. But they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to defile it, and they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Moloch, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind, that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. See, the children of Israel they saw their children when they were offering their children unto devils, sacrificing their children. They saw they loved their children, but for what reason? So that it may be a benefit unto them. Again, I want for my child what I never had so you can live your little fantasy life through their accomplishments. Hence, glorifying yourself through your children. And wrecking and damaging your child along the way. See? They, they saw, they, 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 why do you think, again, why do you think the children of Israel, as a judgment, ate their own children? Because they turned, they turned their children into idols? But, but, but wait, Brad. Wait, Brad. They worshipped their children, but yet they sacrificed their children unto devils? Yes, because they saw their children as their accomplishments unto greater things. To live vicariously through them? Not to bring them up in nurture as they were commanded? Some did, okay, but a majority didn't. Their children were little crutches to make their lives better, not that they would better their children by turning them on to the Lord. Do you see? Do you understand? Okay? Go to Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. Numbers 11. Verses 16 on to verse 20. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel. Yeah, am I reading the right one? Yes, I am. Whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of, my, of the Spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it come out at your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you, because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? Why did we look at that? Why did we look at that? Okay? 
Uh, remember how we looked at uh, Psalm 106 in the previous video, or if I put this together, but in Psalm 106, huh? Remember that? About Psalm 106? Okay. Let's, let's refresh our memories. Psalm 106, again, okay? Psalm 106. Psalm 106, okay? Yes. Verses 37 and 38. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Okay? And why was that? Because they learned the ways of the heathen. Okay? They put themselves above the love of God. So, because they love themselves more than God, the, their own children whom they love above everything, who they honored even above God, yet they sacrificed them unto devils. Why? To benefit themselves. Eli, out of his own selfishness, worshipped and loved his sons more than God. Solomon, Loved himself. Lovers of pleasure is more than lovers of God. And were not willing to put their Isaac on the altar. And the thing about here in Numbers. Okay. <laughs> you know. The Lord got was angry. It's like oh, you, you complain. About, okay fine. I'm going to give you so much. That it's, I'm going to cram it down your face. Down your throat. That you're going to be sick. And it's going to make you sick. And you're going to hate it, and you're going to hate yourselves. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. They made idols of their sons and daughters for all the wrong reasons. There is no good reason, by the way. There is not a good reason. There is no right. You don't make an idol out of a person, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The only one that you are to worship is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? But when you put a person, spirit, soul, body, whether it be a child, whether it be a woman, whether it be your father, your mother, your husband, your wife. Okay? It's a self-serving thing. And we are to serve others, see? Okay, so go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 47 on to verse 49. Okay, verse 47 on to verse 49 in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he, be, until he destroyed thee. Now for our instruction in righteousness, look at this. When you go to the devil, huh? What is that? Okay? You're serving the enemy, number one, but you're hungry, you're not being... Fed. You're thirsty. You have nothing to drink. Okay? You're naked. You're not being clothed. Okay? And you have a yoke of iron. Okay? Hence, going to, you know, Christianity. Okay? Uh, anything that is not God. They're not feeding you. They're not giving you uh, living water. Okay? They're not covering you with the, with the Spirit of God. Okay? All right? And a yoke of iron is upon your neck. Okay? Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, the Jesuits, okay? From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young. And he shall, and he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy herd, until he have destroyed thee. 
Why? Because they put not God first. Okay? And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fenced walls come down wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and, thy, and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, in the siege and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee. Cannibalism. Why? Because they put not God first. Okay? So what? They would eat their own children in the siege and straightness. Because why? They put not God first. Okay? The same children that they loved and adored, but yet also these same children that they would sacrifice on the Moloch for their own personal gain. Yeah. So that the man... Okay. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children which, shall, which he shall leave, so that he shall not give to any of them the flesh of his children whom, shall, whom he shall eat, because he hath nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in all thy gates. The tender and delicate woman among you which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness with tenderness. Her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet and toward her children which she shall bear. For she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and, thy, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore, and sore sickness, and of long continuance. Why? Why? All because they put other things above God. God didn't come first. Okay? And as we have been looking at, okay? They offered their daughters and sons and daughters onto idols and sacrifice so it would be a benefit unto them. Yeah. And see, this cannibalism shows them, number one, that they worshipped their own selves. I will be like the Most High. Why did God as a judgment, allow the children of Israel to go cannibal. Because they worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who was blessed forever. Amen. They worshipped themselves. And they would even, their children that they loved so much, they would sacrifice unto devils. And you're saying, I would rather die than to eat my own child. I'm sure a lot of them said that too. But see, as a form of judgment against them for putting themselves. And that's, that's the crux. Of, that's the whole thing about this, dear friend. Putting yourself above God. Is your Isaac on the altar? You want a good you want a good reminder of how we ought to be? Job chapter 42 verses 1 and 6 on to 6. Job a man who feared God and eschewed evil. A man who was perfect and upright, who had the testimony of God himself. Read Job chapter 1 and 2. 
That's God giving testimony of Job's righteousness. A perfect and upright man. One that feareth God and eschew evil. And Job, who lost everything, shaved his head, fell down on the ground and worshipped. Okay? Let's take this from Job. Job chapter 42, verses 1 and verse 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, and now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent, and dust, and ashes. Job, toward the end of the book of Job, started to get a little high and mighty on the Lord. Then he had to be put in his place, and remember that he is but dust. And that he hated, abhor himself, extreme hatred. Have you put your eyes upon the altar? And Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Verses 25 on to verse 26. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. That's the attitude that we have to have, dear brethren. Nothing above God. Not your, your wife, not your husband, not your son, not your daughter. Nothing above God. Not even yourself. God first. That is his requi That's a requirement. That's a demand. Okay? Can we do it perfectly? Seven days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week? No. No. But a heart that is after God. A perfect heart that belongs unto God. Okay? Not a divided heart. Okay? Because if, if we don't have God, what have we? Okay? John chapter 6. Okay? If, if we don't have God, what hope is there? What is your hope? Huh? That you be reincarnated? Give me a break. Okay? What hope? Can, if you're lost, what hope do you have? Huh? Reincarnation? To be warm food? John chapter 6. Verse 6 on verse 69. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no, no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Jesus our Lord being sar sarcastic here, will ye also go away? Right here, verse 68. Then Shimon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ. Son of the living God. It's that simple. Whom else is there? Who what who else have I in heaven but thee? Who else is there? In First Thessalonians chapter four. First Thessalonians chapter four. Then we'll be done. Verses 13 on to verse 18. And I may uh, edit and put this together and make a uh, three-hour video. <laughs> so, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 18. But I would not, ha not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. And who is our hope? Jesus Christ, the blessed hope. He is our hope. The people of the world, they have no hope. 
Okay? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. It's so simple. It is so simple. God first. And you want to see what happens when you don't put God first? Look at America. This, uh, I'm going to try to combine this to upload it in one upload because I don't like doing two-parters because one part gets watched more than the other, you know. So I'm going to try to put this together and make an over a three-hour video. But um, Church of the Living God, what are you putting before the Lord? If anything, you lost people. If you make it through this, this is long, granted. It's been a big, big thing to do here. Yes. But you need to consider something. The God that you are serving, you lost people. You're serving Satan. But you're serving Satan by self-serving you. By serving yourself. And we looked at children in depth so much because it's all for the kids, right? It's all about the children. It's all about the children. But so many of you see your children as little idols and want to see them succeed for your own benefit, not theirs. Some genuine, genuinely do. Okay, yes, not all. But there again, people make idols out of their children. And we are to have no idols. It's of the Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ. I realize that this video will probably be misunderstood. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm okay and willing to be misunderstood. But what you, what you need to consider... Is your Isaac on the altar? Is there something that you would just absolutely not do, even if our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, asked you to do it? He's not going to ask you to like sacrifice your son or anything like that, but, but, are you going to put your family, your own children, above the Lord? your own family, your own children who have chosen to reject the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? Is your altar, is, is your Isaac on the altar truly? Or is that other God you serve more prominent? Yourself. That's going to be it for this video. I thank you so much for watching this if you do. I am going to try to edit this and put it all together to be a three hour and 21 minute video. Okay, I'm gonna try. If that doesn't work, then it'll be a two-parter. So if you're watching this and it's like, well, it's only one video, that's why. I haven't tried it yet, so. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Love you. Please keep us in your prayer. My wife needs prayers. We need prayers right now. Please keep us in your prayers, dear brethren. We love you. We will see you in the next video.